Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Lovely to see all your smiling faces on this beautiful morning. Um, now, I have a few announcements today. Uh, first of all, welcome to you and to anybody who's watching online uh, through fr uh, the live streaming. And a very special welcome to um, Reverend David Jackson and Diane. Um, welcome in our midst. Um, we also welcome any other visitors here today. Uh, and uh, if you didn't know, there is a barbecue um, after the service and morning tea. Uh, so please feel welcome to stay. It would be lovely to catch up and have a chat. Um, just a few other uh, household um, messages. Marika is away this week, so your phone might not be answered by the same person or you might have to ring again or send an email. Um, next week, Ruben is away on the Sunday. He's got the Sunday off. Um, so we will welcome uh, Reverend Steve Francis and he did promise to be on time this time. So there you go. Um, our sing-along is this Thursday, so everybody welcome. It's a, a wonderful little um, community event. So um, if you have time and you love to sing, you don't need any education or degree to come along. Um, now, on a sadder note, our dear fr um, founder and leader, Pastor John McElroy, uh, passed away peacefully in his sleep last night in Nairobi. So that's it. Um, over to you. Well, good morning. It's lovely to see you all here this wonderful day for our barbecue and, of course, all here to hear my wonderful words, but probably mainly the barbecue, but that's okay. It's lovely to have you all here um, as part of our worship service this morning as we continue to explore prayer. But let us begin worship as we always do by lighting the Christ candle. Thanks, Else. We light a candle, the Christ candle, to recall that in Jesus the most radical, inbreaking presence of God lights our way. And we open the Bible, a collection of people's encounters with the living God. And we pour out this water as a reminder of our baptism in the Holy Spirit. This is God's land. Many have gone before who have honoured God by caring for the land in the ways they have lived and in the stories that they have shared. Nala Karach Wujak Murat Kien Karak Nijabuja. We give thanks for the Wajak people who have held as sacred the duty of protecting the land and living in harmony with it. May God honour and bless them, now and to eternity. And I invite you to join in the blue bold for our call to worship. As we gather today, we call you our Father in heaven. As we gather today, we lift up who you are and what you represent. Hallowed be your name. As we gather today, we seek your ways not our own. Kingdom come, your will be done. As we gather today, we say sorry to you and one another. Forgive us as we forgive. As we gather today, we need you. Give us this day our daily bread. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. As we gather today, we pray. Amen. And as we gather, we sing of our unceasing prayers to God with our first hymn.
we now enter into a time of prayer and we begin with a prayer of adoration for our God. Let us pray. God, Father of Christ, mothering creation, we praise you for Jesus, crucified, risen and reigning. We walk in the dignity of Christ. We leap in the compassion of Christ. We adore Christ's holy name. Christ, saviour of humanity, restorer of life and health, we praise you for dying and rising for us, for travelling our human journey. We walk in the dignity of Christ. We leap in the compassion of Christ. We adore Christ's holy name. Spirit, bringer of Christ into community today, we praise you for making present among us the dying and risen Christ. We walk in the dignity of Christ. We leap in the compassion of Christ. We adore Christ's holy name. Eternal God, three yet one, we adore your holy name. Amen. And now we come to a time of confession. Let us confess the ways we have turned away from God, whose grace is freely and abundantly given. Let us pray. Compassionate God, forgive us when we approach you begging for guidance and direction, but then neglect to follow your instructions. Forgive us when we cry out with our pressing questions, but then stop listening for your answers. Compassionate God, hear our prayer. Gracious God, forgive us when we are shallow, seeking a quick blessing or a fast favour from you without being willing to invest fully in a trusting, committed relationship with you. Forgive us when we are one-sided, asking always for mercy and compassion, but not returning the same. Gracious God, hear our prayer. Comforting God, we confess the ways we have turned away from you in our daily lives. May your presence give us the wisdom to know that you are always with us. Comforting God, Hear our prayer. Amen. This is the best of all. When we are empty, God fills us. When we are disheartened, God is compassionate. When we are wounded, God brings healing. And when we confess our sin, God forgives. In Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. And now we sing of our prayer to God with our next hymn. We're going to play it through once.
Today is our second Sunday around prayer. Mm. Is there another slide? Oh, rats. Well, today is our second Sunday themed around prayer. And we are talking about the many ways that we pray. Some people like to pray the many things that they are thinking of. The long list. Some people like to pray last thing in bed. Sometimes getting through the prayer, sometimes nodding off. Some people like to pray and ask God, Jesus, again and again and again and again and again. There are many ways that we pray. And so we think about all of these different ways because the question we're asking today is how do we pray? And so we're going to turn to our scriptures as we explore how we pray. Our readings today come from the New Testament and gospel readings selected for today. Thank you, James. Our first reading today comes from Paul's letter to the community at Thessalonica. Paul writes a warm and encouraging letter after having to leave Thessalonica in a rush. We pick up the story as he asks them to continue in their good work. A reading from my Christian tradition, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 12 to 22. But we appeal to you, brothers and sisters, to respect those who labor among you and have charge of you in the Lord and admonish you. Esteem them very highly in love because of their work. Be at peace among yourselves. And we urge you, brothers and sisters, to admonish the idlers, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with all of them. See that none of you repays evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to all. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise pro prophecies, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. Our final reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus is teaching the crowds and his disciples in the collection of teachings often called the Sermon on the Mount. We pick up the sermon as Jesus begins to teach about prayer. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 5 to 15. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray... Go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you. When you are praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do. For they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then in this way. Our father in heaven... May your name be revered as holy. May your kingdom come. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we have also forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. In this... Is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Loving God, may my words be loving and true, and may those who listen discern what is not. Amen. During my studies to become a minister, we had the opportunity to visit places of faith for other religions. 
In doing so, I got a glimpse into the different ways that they pray. At the great stupor of universal compassion in Bendigo, of all places, I witnessed people praying by walking around the temple and spinning prayer wheels. During a visit to a mosque, we learnt about the specific times for prayer in Islam and how everyone present for prayer stands, kneels and bows and speaks in unison. For Sikhism, we witnessed a young couple bringing their new baby to the Gurdwara to have them blessed before the Holy Scriptures. I sadly missed the visit to the synagogue, but Judaism also has a range of prayer practices, including having a tefillin strapped to you during morning prayers. But it is not just other faiths that have particular prayer practices. Perhaps you have visited a Catholic cathedral and witnessed the many different prayer stations, each one dedicated to a different saint or the Blessed Virgin Mary, and there's an opportunity to light a candle, say a prayer, and of course make a donation. For some Protestants, this looks nothing like prayer. While many Catholics might struggle to understand why prayer in some Pentecostal churches needs to be said in tongues. Through all these examples, each of us are left with the question, how do I pray? In our reading from Matthew today, Jesus is teaching his disciples and the crowds about prayer. He begins with pretty severe criticism for those who use prayer just to show off. Prayer is not about demonstrating how pious or holy you are. Instead, Jesus advocates that whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. While this passage may or may not have impacted on Christian practices, the idea of individual prayer between you and God is common, and many find it helpful. Perhaps you say your daily prayer alone, perhaps first thing in the morning, or perhaps last thing before bed. Some people have a particular prayer space, sometimes a table with candles and an icon, sometimes a favourite armchair in the morning sun. Some speak out loud the words of their prayer. Some silently think their prayer to God. And some have no words, instead meditating in silence as they pray to God. All of these practices are valid ways for Christians to pray so that they may experience the peace of God and develop a stronger relationship with God. But despite Jesus' harsh words, I do not believe he was opposed to corporate or public prayer when it is done for the right reasons. He was a faithful Jew, and many times he would have, had, he would have prayed at the temple or around Passover or other festivals. Indeed, many Christians for centuries have sought to pray with others. In the Catholic tradition, many people speak aloud their prayer of confession to God alongside their priest. Here at All Saints, we have a small group of three who have been coming together each week to pray for years. Many monastic communities have specific times of the day when the whole community comes together for prayer. Here at All Saints, we come together in worship, and at several points, we come together in prayer as a group, sometimes while just one person speaks, sometimes with words spoken together in unison, and sometimes with names and places spoken aloud 
in a wondrous cacophony of prayer. Perhaps most famously in our Christian tradition, we say together each week the Lord's Prayer. Today's reading from Matthew includes much of the words to the Lord's Prayer, and there's a shorter version also found in Luke's Gospel. Throughout the centuries, the language and translation have changed in relatively small ways. And so largely, the prayer is very similar. So that means for nearly 2,000 years, Christians all over the world have been saying the same prayer. It's incredible to imagine that as we say the Lord's Prayer, we join with all Christians throughout history and all Christians today throughout the globe. It is easy to take for granted, but I find this incredible unity powerful. And finally, we have Paul's letter to the community at Thessalonica. Paul is pretty thrilled with this community, unlike most he wrote to, and so this is considered his most encouraging letter. He seeks to encourage the community to continue in the wonderful behaviour they are already doing, to continue to respect those who work for you, be patient, help the weak, and so on. And then he says this about prayer. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, giving, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. For some, this has become a call to explore what it means to pray throughout one's life experience. Can you be praying while cleaning? What does it look like to pray while working? Many people enjoy praying while walking through nature or sitting by the beach and feeling the salty breeze on their face. For some, life is one long unceasing prayer to God. I do disagree with one point of Paul's. I don't think we are rejoicing always, not in life and not in prayer. In our Psalms, we find a range of prayer topics, from joy and celebration of creation to lament and pain. In Psalm 88, the psalmist begins with, O Lord God of my salvation, at night when I cry out before you, Let my prayer come before you. Incline your ear to my cry. And they finish with the words, Your wrath has swept over me. Your dread assaults destroy me. They surround me like a flood all day long. From all sides they close in on me. You have caused friend and neighbour to shun me. My companions are in darkness. This is a prayer of pain and certainly does not have a happy ending. Sometimes we too experience times in our lives where our prayers are ones filled with loss, grief or the pain of others. Fortunately, prayer can hold all our emotions and thoughts, whether we are rejoicing or lamenting. So we have all these options. We could pray alone, prayer in a small group, prayer during church, prayer during life's activities. How do we know which one? Reverend Dr. Jeff Lilburn, known to many here, wrote a book called Pray Without Ceasing. No points for guessing where he got the title. But in it, He describes his journey with prayer over a lifetime. 
And one thing in his story stands out to me. It has changed. From early years of prayer meetings to disciplined monastic traditions and now explorations into Catholic Ignatian spirituality, at different points, he has found different ways to pray and those different ways have been important for his spiritual nourishment and faith. And it is here that I find the answer. When I ask myself, how do I pray? Well, the answer today is that I really enjoy praying with others, whether in worship, during meetings, or on pastoral visits. Prayer with others is sustaining and nourishing for me. Perhaps in a different season of life, my prayer practices will change as and when I need them to. I do not know what the answer to this question is for each of you. Only you can go on a journey of exploration to find out how to pray. Some of you have explored over a lifetime and have a settled prayer practice. Some might be finding your current practice challenging and might be in need of a change. What I can say is that prayer is critical to our ongoing relationship with God. It might be through walks in nature. It might be through engaging in our prayer chain. But in some way, large or small, each of us are called as Christians and disciples of Christ to find ways to engage in prayer, to engage in a relationship with God, to experience the peace of God. It is a discipline and a ministry we can participate in at any age. And in doing so, we enter into centuries of prayer traditions. So as we continue to pray during worship and as you leave here today, I invite you to reflect on your prayer practices. I invite you to explore different ways to pray and find a practice that is life-giving and nourishing for your relationship with God. Amen.
and now it is our turn to lift our voices and instruments. And we sing our request that Jesus Christ teach us how to pray with our next hymn. We now come to a time when we think about our wider community. And today we're thinking about our weekly, for our weekly prayer, an organisation called Pickies, or Perth Inner City Youth Services. In 1978, George Davies, then the youth consultant of the Uniting Church, and now retired minister and member of this congregation, and Maureen Munro, youth officer with the Anglican Church, convened a meeting to discuss the young people present in the inner city. What eventuated was a collective of agencies to provide detached work for inner city youth. And in 1980s, 1980, Pickies was born, consisting of 19 community agencies. An initial program of Pickies was the CAVE a drop-in centre for young people that would eventually evolve into a space particularly for Indigenous young people. Prior to the development of Pickies, the idea of a household network had already begun in Scarborough, where volunteers from the Uniting Church had offered a spare bedroom in their homes for those young people most in need. Eventually, Pickies was chosen as the agency to oversee the household network program. And by 1986, Pickies was providing independent accommodation in a number of shared houses for young people aged 16 to 25, and still does. A major area of work over the last three decades has been the development and support and education programs for sexual and gender diverse young people 
who were making up more, a larger proportion of the homeless population. All Saints Flory Uniting Church, at the request of George Davies, has supported Pickies for more than 40 years by donating goods and delivering them to their office. If you would like to help this ministry, please speak with Marika in the office and she can get you in touch with Lynn Jackson, who currently coordinates all of the goods and the drop-offs. We now have a little bit of a special thing. I'm going to move to the front. You get to come up the front, which is a bit of a surprise for you, but Ross knew this was coming. There's no clicking involved, it's fine. As many of you would know, Black Pearl is one of our programs here at All Saints that seeks to support and educate and does a whole lot of things for people in the Papuan provinces of Indonesia. And shortly, Leanne and Ross, along with Kerry Povey and Jeff Shutt from Trinity North and Mark Fielding, are heading up to the Papuan provinces to visit the people and our programs in person. A hallmark of the Black Program, uh, the Black Pearl Network, is the um, personal relationships that we have developed with individuals in Papua. Primarily, this trip will seek to re-establish connection with our partner church, GKI, in Indonesia, and particularly also to look at groundwork for a tertiary-level English program to support our BPEC graduates who have reached a certain level but are looking to go further. And so, we thought we would pray a blessing for you both and for Black Pearl as you head off on this trip. Let us pray. Loving God, we pray your blessing on the Black Pearl Network. We pray that your presence will go with Leanne and Ross and the whole group as they seek to meet with our friends and partners, as they seek to work about, to bring about your kingdom, to be there for the Papuan people, to see our English programs and other work, to bring back stories of future possibilities. And so may your presence give them comfort and peace as they travel and as they do this work on our behalf. In your name we pray. Amen. Safe flight. We now come to a time of offering for our community. As we wait for the coming of God's good reign, we answer the invitation to take part in God's work by bringing our tithes and offerings with joyful gratitude. The offering for the work of the church will now be taken up. Thank you.
Let us pray. God, we give thanks for your presence in our lives. Bless these offerings, that they may be used to advance your kingdom and glorify your name. And may our faith continue to grow stronger each day, bringing us closer to you. Amen. Each month here at All Saints, we take an opportunity to have an additional offering for the work of an agency or a charity beyond our community. This month, our retiring offering is going to Frontier Services, a national uniting church agency. And I'm grateful to have Reverend David Jackson, Frontier Services chaplain in the Pilbara, with us today to tell us a little bit more about his work. Thank you, David. for the opportunity. It's great to see so many uh, wonderful faces out here in this congregation. Um, my congregation's the bush. Uh, I don't actually have a physical congregation uh, in the Pilbara in Top Price, but uh, uh, everyone in the bush is my congregation and that's where I provide my pastoral care. Um, thank you for the theme of prayer too. Uh, I heard many years ago that prayer is not our way of changing God, but God's way of changing us. And uh, ministry is not our way of serving God, but God's way of serving others. Uh, I love our motto of Frontier Services, which is standing with people in the bush. I think you've got a picture or a slide there showing us where our chaplains are in Western Australia. We have five chaplains serving uh, in WA. I'm in the Pilbara and I'm the only one north of the 26th parallel. Uh, we also have uh, someone in the Gascoigne, uh, John Tompkins. We have Mitch Filoski in Mekathara uh, working that uh, uh, area there. And we have Rick Payne uh, serving in the Midwest as a disaster recovery chaplain. And way over into the Goldfields and Esperance area, we have Lindsay Ginn, who has a very special music ministry working with uh, children in schools with music uh, as part of that. Uh, so it's quite a diverse group. Uh, I think the next slide will show you the national picture, or maybe not. <laughs> it's on the wall out there. So we have chaplains in every state and nearly every territory. We don't have anyone in the AC2 bit, but uh, I think they might need somebody there. Uh, <laughs> uh, very good. Um, my wife uh, is my companion as we travel the, the Pilbara. We, we live in Tom Price, which is in the centre of our patrol, and uh, we probably spend one third of our time in Tom Price and two thirds patrolling around the various communities. Uh, my parish is twice the size of Victoria and we travel about two and a half thousand kilometres per month. So we're on the road, we live in a caravan, in fact we've been living in it for nine months till they pr were able to fix the man so we can move into it, which we have now, praise God. Not that we are there long. <laughs> uh, I thought I'd just highlight some of the things that, uh, because we, we took up this patrol in January this year, 45 degrees for about two months. It was really quite a, a uh, baptism of fire, so to speak, uh, living in the caravan in those conditions. But uh, we managed to make a uh, pretty good uh, dent in the work around the Pilbara. Uh, in Tom Price, I work principally with First Nations people in the communities of Wakathuni and Bilari. Uh, we also have a program in Tom Price itself working with children who are, who are at risk, which are mainly uh, First Nations people, uh, who don't fit in with the regular education system and they usually come from homes where there is a significant uh, uh, 
problem with violence. Uh, so we provide a nice friendly atmosphere for the kids in our what we call the fun box, uh, which is an after school program for these children uh, once a week. Uh, in when we move over to Marble Bar and Nullagine, uh, my darling wife has been volunteering in the school there to uh, make the library in the school able to be used by the students and, and the staff. Uh, she, she's done the power of work there uh, and doing it all voluntarily as an Outback Links volunteer. So we have some information out there. You can become an Outback Links volunteer as well and we'll gi give you the resources you need to put your hand up to provide that sort of support. Uh, in Nullagine I'm working with again another uh, Aboriginal, Aboriginal community there. There are a number of artists who live in this community and uh, I'm uh, reaching out to, to them. My discriminator in the way I work is that if there's a high level of need uh, but low resources, that's a good place to actually start in this kind of ministry. Uh, in Port Hedland, uh, I've been, Di and I have been working with a Fijian congregation, which, praise God, uh, will become a congregation of the Uniting Church, or at least a faith community to start with, uh, from this coming presbytery on the 9th of November. Uh, so I provide a monthly communion and Di provides a children's program uh, when we are with them on those occasions. They feed us very, very well and of course you can imagine the music that comes uh, when they get together with their choirs and they're singing in harmonies uh, and it's all the age groups uh, spanning, well I think Di and I are the eldest there but uh, it, it spans the whole of the generations. It's a fantastic community to belong to and we're hoping that they will be able to use the Uniting Church building we have in Port Hedland and we're working towards uh, that to be achieved as well. That we haven't had a congregation there since 2018. It uh, may have been uh, even longer than that. Uh, so it's wonderful to have a congregation um, wanting to be a part of us and is thriving and growing and doing some amazing work. Uh, I'm a volunteer police chaplain. Um, because of my reach in the Pilbara, I get to go to many of the remote area police stations to provide support of pastoral care to the police in the area. And Di and I are both volunteers of the State Emergency Services, so if you do get stuck in Karajini and you've broken your ankle or something in the bottom of one of the gorges, you might uh, see our friendly faces lifting you up and rescuing you. Um, that's probably uh, a good uh, focus on the kinds of things that we are up to and other things that are going to be developing. Uh, we're about to move into another Aboriginal community, Di uh, helping out the, the school and me uh, connecting with the community elders and leaders uh, at uh, uh, Yandiera, which is uh, all coming up. So thank you for the opportunity. We do rely very heavily um, on funding from the public purse. Uh, I don't think the Uniting Church itself pays a lot of money um, to Frontier Services, but uh, it costs about $5 million a year to put us in place and for the other projects and programs that they have undergoing. And uh, we rely almost, almost entirely on the generosity of you uh, and uh, a whole range of other people around Australia. So thank you for your support. Well, thank you, David, and thank you for being with us today. It's quite a journey from the Pilbara to get here, and so it's really grateful for you to be able to spend this time with us while you're here. A major fundraiser for Frontier Services is their great Outback Barbecues. So today, because we have our retiring offering, we're holding a free barbecue for everyone, and I encourage you to join us in that. Donations towards Frontier Services for the barbecue and their work can be made in the Perspex box on your way out of the sanctuary. 
for we have generously given. Now let us come together in prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, we continue to pray for peace around our world. We pray for all people who are impacted by war and violence. May your presence bring comfort and peace to those who suffer and compassion to those who lead. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for the work of Frontier Services. We pray for our bush chaplains, their families, and all who work to support our regional and remote communities. May your presence give our chaplains, like David, strength and resilience as they work to bring about your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And loving God, we pray for pickies. We give thanks for those who work to support our young people when they are most vulnerable. May your presence continue to inspire all who volunteer and support pickies. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we call out the names of those people, places or communities who are on our hearts at this time. Brian, Marion, and Neil. Loving God, be with those we have named and those who remain unnamed but on our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And as your people, we pray together the prayer Christ taught us with all Christians throughout history and around the globe in the language of our heart. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We sing of our prayer for grace with our next hymn.
Go in peace, refreshed and renewed in the eternal love of God. May God, may God our guardian, protect you. Christ the healer, restore you. And the Holy Spirit, sustain you. This day and forevermore. Amen. And let us sing and march about the light and love of God as we bless each other and go to our barbecues.